It's hard for me to hear. Come right in. Come You'll hear me, in. but it's hard for me to hear you. Phil. Huh? Phil. I'm okay. Come on. Let's go. Come on closer. Lee Mason, I came tonight and I thank you, Council and Barge, for inviting me. But I have finally given up on taking pictures of the tractor trailers and big trucks on, on the sidewalks. There's so many uh, that just to share with you, on March 7th at 345, I called the Northampton Police Department regarding a Care Mark delivery truck, big one, not a tractor trailer, a big one, entirely on the sidewalk in front of the they just changed the name to Fabian uh, gas station next to Hotel Northampton. And uh, at, at 3.49, a cruiser drove by, and uh, he stopped a little bit, and he looked, and then he took off. So I said, well, maybe that's not the cruiser that's supposed to be coming here. So I called back to the police station, and the response was, oh, they're just making a delivery. He'll be going soon. That's a direct quote from the dispatch. And so I mentioned the city ordinance about parking on sidewalks, no matter who you are, whether it's a car or a truck or delivery, you don't park and block a whole sidewalk. So I was referred to a supervisor, Sergeant Barshak, B-A-R-S-C-H Barshak. Nice man, spoke to him for quite a while. We discussed the city ordinance. He said, yeah, I know, he said, but uh, they can park in the middle of Main Street and deliver. They, they're, they're not blocking on crosswalks. As long as they're not blocking on crosswalk, I don't care in the middle. That's not too bad. I've watched that. It works. We went on and on and on. Uh, basically, they're not going to do anything about it. That's what? kind of what it came down to. So, uh, that night also, I had to go to uh, Main Street for the arrive at 5 which was at the flower shop, the Chamber of Commerce arrived at 5. And I found a parking place after about 20 minutes of kind of parked and moving around. And my wife went in and I said, I just got to do a couple of phone calls quick and I'll be right in. So it's right in the middle of Main Street. It's kind of, oh boy, there's a gallery there. It used to be the old Heritage Bay. It's that general area. So I observed a young lady writing tickets Bill Carter was parked on a corner uh, illegally. You know, she's taking pictures and all that. And then she's back there. You know, I see her all the time all around town. Pleasant Street, I don't care what time of day, it's the same one. She's reading her phone, she's texting constantly. Constantly. So, anyway, she walked right by the car next to me that I saw as I pulled in my barn spot. Lady pulls in, gets out of the car, runs into the crosswalk, runs across the street. I'm telling you, run. It's a handicap spot. With no handicap black. So I said, my way. So now I call my wife and say, I'm gonna be a while, this is gonna take a while. In the meantime, the, the parking meter bank, she walks down a little bit further, and she comes back, she's like this way, get out of my truck and I said, excuse me, can I ask you a question? She said, as I saw you, take it, that car takes some pictures on the corner up there. Oh yes, yes, that they, they were parked a little I said, what about that car right there? Oh, they're in a spot. I said, it's a handicap spot. And there's no handicap plaque or, or plate. And you walk right by it while you were texting. I said, I see you texting all the time. You're walking around all the time. I said, I'm sure it's city business. Oh, yes. I said, yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> but then you think you can look into that. So she went over. She looked all around and all around. Hmm. I did not see her write a ticket. I went inside. I'm assuming she did not write a ticket. I just, I don't know that. I was so disgusted. So the moral of the story is, as I've been told, that the money from handicapped parking violations comes to this committee. Exactly. And I think you could use that, that money wisely, I'm sure, to do some of the projects that I've seen in your minutes from time to time. Now, Westfield and uh, oh, West Springfield. You chat, Channel 22 did stories about two years ago, about a year ago, respectively, on those two towns, where the police actually went into private parking lots, like hotels, uh, malls, businesses, uh, medical facilities, and the amount of violations were unbelievable. But that money went into the coffers of those communities. So uh, I'm just, I don't know what, I don't know what, 
should be done, but it would just make sense to me as a citizen and somebody that lectured to many here, by the way, that it would be great work. That maybe we could find some way that they could maybe do that and you could get a few thousand dollars because these fines are not cheap and there's so many violations. Yeah. And some of them yeah. aren't necessarily no handicap plaque or a sticker. It's somebody unauthorized. And I can tell you that by the lady that got out of that car and ran across the street. Now, I've got a handicap plaque. I rarely use it. End of the day, I kind of have to because I run out of uh, I run out of air. I only have one lung and two new leaves. I, I, if I don't need it, I don't use it. But I see these people get out and run. Mm -hmm. I mean, God is awful. Right. So uh, that's the moral of the story, and uh, I appreciate it. And if there's any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them be between now and the end of the meeting at any point. I'd like to join you. But thanks for listening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, thanks again, Phil. And uh, it is frustrating. I have to say, my experience, uh, we have the chief here. Um, we raised this, but it seems to me like the meeting of the UN when we do these kinds of meetings. So I would like to suggest that we schedule um, a meeting. Uh, Jean, uh, U.S. Chair, Marianne, uh, meet with the chief um, and say, is there an intent to enforce this or, or not? Because if not, the intent of this commission should be to institute an ADA complaint. That's, that's our only recourse. If we do not get enforcement of disability rights law by this municipality, then we have to institute complaints and bust the city's chops. As simple as that. And that means there has to be, you've identified both of the the parking officer specifically, and cruiser. This means there are deficiencies in staff training or the wrong messages are begin, being given to staff. This is unacceptable. Now, I was talking to Jean about this and had suggested about writing a letter to the chief from our commission on disabilities. Okay. If not, I wrote a note. We talked about it before. Meet directly. This is face to face. Chief, do it or you have a federal complaint. Then what I'm suggesting, Chris, yeah. we bring it back here. We bring it back here. And I, then yeah. we can go ahead and tell her what our plan's going to be. And we can also invite former counselor Phil Sullivan here of him speaking to her of the the seriousness being involved where somebody is actually going to get killed. Right. So we don't, because people should not, people so should not, here. people should not find that. That way street. all of us, that way all of us will have questions for her. He will be here. Yeah. And all the calls that he has made, all the pictures that he has taken, but she has suggested about having planters put out there. Phil is saying that is not going to solve the problem. Yeah. Well, no, I, I think an installation there, you know, is a solution. Um, but we don't have any processes to expedite this sort of thing through the city. You know, it's like um, things move so slowly. So it seems to me there are two levels to address this. One, the chief recommended the installation of a barrier. Um, at this point, um, these issues have to go to the mayor's office directly. But to get something expedited, there must be temporary barriers that they use at this point. I, I can I can speak with the mayor's office about this. I'm also wondering if it would be faster to have a meeting with the police chief rather than waiting till the next meeting. You mean to have us here? I no, I need to have to, for you, for you two and myself, maybe to meet. And I'd with like her. to have Phil. Sure. Oh okay. yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it yeah. doesn't need to wait another month, is what I'm saying. It could, we could contact. I can contact the mayor. Or we can set up a meeting. The mayor can maybe facilitate a barrier being put in because that is what the chief 
suggested. Well, it's Phil just, is suggesting that that is not a good suggestion of putting big planters out there. Can I address that? I just want my vote alone. Putting planters would, would, they would have to go on city property, mm -hmm. which is the that's sidewalk. True. So now you're taking a sidewalk that's this wide, you're putting a planter on there. Now, now somebody has to get around there, and then if you have the snow, where are they going to go now? And so the planters doesn't make a lot of sense. Except it keeps vehicles from parking there. Well, the, 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 the business is it's, it's, called, it's called a bollard. And a bollard can be Perfect. narrow, or a bollard can be as big as a planter. It's something that's it's cutting accurate. down on handicap uh, accessibility Does it have rather than enhancing it. That's right. It's on the. Uh, Does it have to be on city property, or is if the business is con is continuing to allow violations of a city ordinance? Can you know, that it be I don't know, but on, a you know that kind of a barrier does not need to be more than four to six inches wide. Okay. Well, so that shouldn't be too hard to get put there. If I mentioned, if you're driving today on King Street by the hotel at that particular gas station that I have cited for the violations, you'll see they've now put a sign on their property. Yes, I saw that. Off the sidewalk on their property so that they can't park on the sidewalk anymore. It just says they're gas prices, but it's a very temporary sign. Mm -hmm. So will it stay there? Is sure. that why yes. it's there? I don't know. No, it'd be, it'd but drive by a tick will. Right. But but it's helping to keep people from parking. At the there. moment. Yeah. At the moment, Plus, can't park it I was just talking with Jean. If we can get that uh, meeting with Chief Jody Casper, would you attend that meeting with us? Yes. What is a good time for you, Chris? You know, from late mornings through afternoons, but generally not before 11. But after 11. Not sure if being able to be after 11 or 11. So write that down, Lori. So take, Chris, Judith, I, and Phil. Can, can I go with you? So why don't, why don't I try to set it up for email? Lori, can, can I go too? Um, we'll, we'll talk about it. So I want to, I should be a part, part right, of it. I, I think we, we shouldn't try to set up a meeting right now. Let's do it through email. Phil, your persistence finally pushed my red button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> no. I'm not wacky. They go. <laughs> and they do, they do uh, ticket some people to park in HP spot because Chris got a hundred dollar ticket for parking in HP spot. They don't like my calls. How much money fifth of March? I can't do anything from 12 to 1. Let's do it outside the community because there's just too many people involved. Yeah. On camera, right? But I'm just letting you know, write that date down, Marie, please. Oh, thank you. Also, um, I have to say, knowing hearing that Phil was appearing today, I added to the draft report, um, I, I've given to Marie that um, a, a specific recommendation on the enforcement of these, of these parking provisions. And I, um, I introduced uh, two of Phil's photographs into that into the draft report because clearly this needs evidence. The two things that have been, been raised in the last couple of months both have to do with um, uh, sidewalk blockages and one was a uh, major concern for snow and the concerns you've been raising now for quite a couple of years on uh, um, vehicles. Do, so I'm sure they're documented in our meeting minutes, but do you, have you have a running tally of all the times? Because I'm, I'm wondering if that might help us to to say these many reports have been made. Like, I just give up. I just have to read a lot of them. I mean, I just have some. Okay. No, I don't have the dates. Anytime but. you call the police department, and Phil, you know that. You and I have worked with them for quite a while. Everything is logged. When you make a call to the police department of complaints, they have it logged. Okay, good. That's so good that thing. should be easy enough. Yeah, and it's recorded. I yeah. Mean, I spoke to the sergeant. Everything is recorded. You can go back to that date and time. Right. She wants it. It was pretty civil. Sure. All right. Well, can we have the next one? Sure, we should have the approval of the call. Can we have So moved. 
So, folks had an opportunity to review the minutes. Does anybody want to speak? Hi, I don't know if I'm with the Human Rights Commission. Okay. I apologize for being late. I work in court in one of my cases now. I'm very excited to be here. We have a place for you on the agenda. Sorry? We have a place for you on the agenda. Oh, fantastic. Great. Okay. Yeah. I second it. Motion to approve the second vote, please say aye. Aye. Those who like to sign, please so approve. Uh, agenda parking, Pleasant Street parking ordinance. Uh, that's the next item on the agenda. Uh, you go by the site visit. Uh, I did two site visits. Marie did one with us. Chris and Judith came, and, and Councilor Jim Nash from Transportation and Parking Commission. And Chris can tell you what went on Friday because it was the same site that when I first went with Jim and the resident who was applied to become on the Commission on Disability, thank goodness he came by with his wheelchair and he was very vocal about agreeing with me, which you finally came and Judith and agreed on the same spot because of the safety part of it. So maybe you can talk to us about. Well, Judy can identify the locations better. The consideration well, were. The location is on Pleasant Street. <coughs> and, um, it's, it's going, it's on the south side, of, well, heading south. And it would be either in front of Roberto's, the restaurant, or across that little side street that I don't know the name of, or in front of the package store. And clearly the spot in front of Roberto's 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 is, a is, is, is better. It's a wider space. It's just before a crosswalk. Um, it uh, doesn't have anything blocking it from, you know, to the sidewalk if it were if you had a van and you needed to put your ramp down. And it's a wider space if you need to come out the driver's door. The other space is a narrow part of the road. It's right after side road that people just turn out and quickly look to see that people have stopped for the crosswalk and start driving right. before they're even looking. So that would be, that's a terrible spot for anybody to park in. It should not be an HP spot. And plus it doesn't have the same um, clearance either on the passenger side or the driver's side. Right. So we all felt, we all felt that the spot in front of the road was, was And there definitely is a drainage problem there. Yeah, in front of the road. That's true. Yeah, and the actual level of the sidewalk is almost another foot above the level of the top of the curb. Mm -hmm. So there's an unfinished area between, so for multiple reasons. So um, it would need a lot of modification yeah. to be a handicap spot. So we will send a letter stating so our, I think our, our recommendation. Our, the motion is that uh, um, we ask the ADA coordinator to send a um, brief letter to uh, uh, to Councillor Nash. Is that this is the TPC? The... We're going to send a letter to Councillor Jim Nash for the Transportation and Parking Commission, and also a letter to go to the director of the Department of Public Works, Donna Lascalia. Yeah, and and uh, the letter would specify that uh, based on the, the site visit uh, last Friday, we are recommending that the uh, location of the spot in front of Roberto's is highly preferable. The other location is not feasible for. So, and I will give you the language. Okay, great. Could you tell me one more time? Uh, I was to go to the Transportation Parking Commission. And then you mentioned someone else that you go It goes to, to um, councilor, City Councilor Jim Nash, Transportation and Parking Commission, and then to the Director of the Department of Public Works, Donna Lascalia. <coughs> That's L-A, S as in Sam, C-A-L-E-I-A. The last name again, Lascalia, L-E-S. L-A, 
Okay. Capital S C A L E I A. Thank you. You're welcome. Next item, next item on the uh, agenda is a, is a human rights commission. Oh, oh sweet. Do we need to uh, vote on that whether we're going to yes. send that yes. letter? Yeah, we said. Yes. Yeah, a motion. A motion to be made and second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those in the right side, I a motion to be made and second. That was a motion to be made and second. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, okay. thank you. Oh, excuse me. Yes. All right. So, why don't we just, we, which did you go back to, Gene? I'm sorry. You went back and finished. The, the motion was to the send the letter to Jim Nash and others specifying the recommendation of the commission that the parking space uh, in front of Roberta's, based on our site visit, is the, um, is the preferable and really the only feasible space. Thank you, Caps. Okay, I'm going to move by. All right, move my motion. I, yes. I did. There you go. And seconded. Petition. Petition. Judy, you me. moved. You moved I the moved the first. She moved the second. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> we deal with the same stuff on our commission. I know how it is. So we invited. Human Rights Commission to come to talk about collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And I think um, I tried to sort of elaborate on that a little bit, but I think that really we need to have a conversation about that. So I, I know people had ideas. About that. Well, thank you. Oh, okay. Can we have your name again? Oh, yeah, it's Narald, N U R A L. And then my last name is Mohammed, M O H A M M E. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I'm definitely very excited to be here. I don't, I'll just speak a little bit about the Human Rights Commission, but I know this is more an opportunity for you guys to tell us what we can do to help support you and collaborate with you. Um, currently, I don't know how much you know about the Human Rights Commission, but we're currently kind of undergoing some changes. I've only been on it for about a year or so, um, but I know that before I was on it, the type of work the Human Rights Commission was doing was a lot different to the type of work we're trying to move towards now. So we are trying to look for a lot more collaboration. We're planning on doing a full year. This hasn't been like released to the public yet, so this will be a little behind the scenes. But we're planning on doing a full year of listening circles. And part of that was speaking to various members of the community, because whenever we've had um, various groups in the community, because whenever we've had listening circles, what we tended to see was mainly white, middle class, females mostly was who was coming to these things. So we wanted to be able to experience and expose ourselves to learning more from other members of the community. So whether it be um, people of color, people of various religions, speaking with people with disabilities, um, all across the board. So this for us is very exciting that you guys reached out at such a time that we're actually actively seeking this and hoping to be able to make some changes within the Human Rights Commission based off of what we learned from all the different communities that we speak with. Who is the chair? Um, right now it is Karen. Um, She's still Karen the chair. Space. Yeah, she is, yeah. At our last meeting, she talked about the possibility of stepping down and giving it to someone else, so I don't know, it's still up in the air. And um, Lori Lutzel, is she yep. the vice chair? Yeah, she is, yeah. It's still Lori out there. Do you, guys, yeah. do you guys do like LGBT at, over there? Too? Yeah, so that's one of the other groups that we're planning on um, trying to meet with, because I think it's, I don't know if anyone's ever heard this story before, but there was a community, um, I don't want to say what country, because I don't know for sure, but I know it was a third world country, a bunch of people came in to help. Um, and try to make some changes, and they thought of all these own ideas, how to make it safer, how to make it less violent, how to do this and that, and they tried implementing it in all these various ways, and they didn't really see much success when they met with the members of the actual community. They said to them, well, we'd like some street lights, so that way it's not dark at night, and then there'll be less crime. So we feel like it's one of those, we don't want to come in and try to make changes, or try to do things that we think are going to be best or what people need. We want to be able to speak to each group and then really be able to support everybody with what they would like versus what we think they, they need. Like. That's true. Uh, the reason why I requested that the Human Rights Commission come in with us and work with us is when we did citywide every ward and 
probably were involved in that also. And each one of us worked with somebody assigned by Carrie to come on the wards and talk about the Human Rights Commission. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Do you remember yeah. that? And it was brought up about people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. There was great concerns about that and about the city itself with the way the sidewalks are, making it very difficult for people, even, you know, with wheelchairs or with crutches or whatever. And absolutely correct. And then the winter chimes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that, we had that meeting during the winter. Yeah. And the amount of snow, and about the width of the sidewalks and so forth. And I have to thank Marie because finally, it's on the radio saying, now you need to shovel it within the full width after 24 hours after a storm. And we've been trying to get that on there for almost a year. So I think it would be great if you could come in and cooperate with us, um, helping us on the Commission on Disabilities for people's needs here in the city, okay. especially being able to have a good quality of life and be able to walk, no matter what their disability is, because it's become very, very difficult in this city. And yes, everything takes money, but sometimes you have to look at the big picture and say times are changing and look at our capital improvements and maybe say, well, we need to hold up on something and we need to go ahead and do this sidewalk. You know, because a five-year plan takes a long time. And it takes a long time, five years, for our sidewalks to become very, very deplorable. So I think we need you to come in, work with us. We need a solution of how and where we're going to go about keeping our sidewalks safe. Like in Ward 6, I don't have very many sidewalks. June, also in Ward 7, not hardly any sidewalks except for new development. Okay, so we have a problem out there. Our people end up walking or either have wheelchairs on the road. Ward 2 has a lot of um, uh, side streets and there's this uh, office with college off of Elm Street. And a lot of sidewalks I know that I do my walking that is not um, they just, they, yeah they just like the ones that I have a problem with um, they just do the small slow path so that in a wheelchair you definitely not get through. Yeah, right. I'm I'm pushing a baby carriage <laughs> my son and I can't get through so I definitely can manage a wheelchair. And then I'm more for to the Northampton when I go downtown there's like too much I think sometimes people don't like mm -hmm. sh shovel. So mm -hmm. it's really bad because I don't want to like fall on my face and I don't do well to my first and the ice and you know it's pretty bad. But but at Smith College they need to put more lights on that on that crosswalk too, right there, because yes. one year I got hit by a car at I can do you one better. I actually witnessed an accident at the corner this just last week, uh Henshaw and Elm Street. Um, so it's, uh, you know, the Smith College uh, Campus Center looks out on Elm Street and uh, Cutter Ziskin is on the other side, there's that crosswalk. This was last week, the students are away, so there wasn't that many students, I'm walking my dog, we're coming around the Campus Center, and I see this woman coming from Cutter Ziskin crossing to the Campus Center side. It's about 7.15, 7.30, getting a little bit dark, the car coming from the John Green Hall, coming from downtown. Just didn't see her. She was in the crosswalk, and like, oh my God, that's it's going to hit her. And he hit her. And uh, I stayed. I was the only one that was a live witness. The police came. Uh, the ambulance. They, they took my statement. And um, I, I've never seen somebody actually physically hit like that. But that was that crosswalk. And uh, you know the one I'm talking week. about. You know the one I'm talking. The one that 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 campus that the one that does have a. a I like, I know because I got hit by a car in 2015 because it was foggy, but there's no light on that. Well, this was last week. It wasn't foggy, it wasn't rainy, it wasn't snowing, it wasn't skating. There was an older gentleman that was driving. He stopped. Uh, he was probably in the 70s and he was in the air. So, I hate to have people so in the 70s describe this whole thing. Well, I, I, well, at least he stopped. I think, could I, I frame things <laughs> a little bit more broadly? Yeah, sure. 
the fairly substantial report sitting in front of Marie is an update of our entire, or most of our entire, ADA self-evaluation and transition plan, right? The primary civil rights mandate that's overarching for the city is Title I of the ADA. That is disability rights mandate. So the intersection with the your Human Rights Committee is one, it would be very useful to have those of you who are on the Human Rights Committee at some point have an opportunity that we can get you up to speed in terms of the scope of the ADA because the framework of disability is huge. It is much more than sidewalks. We have a deaf community in this city of disproportionate size because of the history of the Clark School. That community is largely disenfranchised because of the lack of investment in effective communications resources. Regular sign language interpreters. We also have a significant number of folks who are hard of hearing. There's lack of use of assistive listening systems commonly. We have a homeless population who are largely people with developmental and multiple disabilities who've been displaced, are destitute, and, and homeless, for whom there are very, very complex relationships with the city, including with the police department. And we can run it down. We have, we have, we have parents and children. I mean, the scope of disability has affected community is kind of daunting. So it would be good if we could perhaps have um, you know, some more detailed conversation and then really lay out for you, we're getting ready to take uh, this draft out um, for some kind of public comment and hearing. Um, and it would be very useful for us to line up some different constituencies of support for the uh, major pieces. Our number one recommendation is that uh, the scope of disability obligations under ADA uh, is simply beyond being able to add it on to the, the director of senior services as, a, as an add-on. Our experience in recent years is it, it simply can't be done in that way. So we are um, discussing with the mayor the in investment in a position, whether full or part-time, it would well, be specifically a disability position. Was that really an add-on for? So I'm the director of the senior center, but okay, I'm also the ADA coordinator for wow. Northampton. Um, so really, it is a human rights issue. Yeah. And I want to encourage the members of the commission. We are going to disseminate this draft report. Please spend some time and read it. I had to say to um, to Dwayne, who we met with yesterday at a meeting, that on the previous draft, the only suggestion I had on language and comment came from from Dwayne. You know, I'm I'm trying on this stuff, but don't think I know everything on this. You know, your good sense and perception fills work has resulted in, in an additional recommendation. Jeremy's uh, press exposure of the issues around snow clearance. Uh, all of these things are really the kind of community input that we need. What, what we're gonna have to do actively, um, the um, reaching out to the deaf community to really have um, some substantial and appropriate communication with uh, what people are experiencing about their involvement, not only in government, but in the general life of the community is gonna be significant. And we can sure use you all as our allies to do it. We would love to be, yeah. Yes. Definitely. I know for me it's personally something that hits home too because I think you know him, Letitia. Um, Sadie, do you know Sadie from Whole Children? Yeah. Yeah, so he's my brother. Um, what? He's in, yeah, he's in wheelchair as well and he also wears hearing aids. And um, so for me personally, this is definitely something that's like close to home, close to my heart. I know my mom and I have complained about. I know it's not just the sidewalks, but we've complained about the sidewalks so yeah. many times. We push my brother's wheelchair, he doesn't have a mobilized one, so we have to push it. And so for us, it's, you know, there's no way that he can do it on these sidewalks. So uh -huh. it's very difficult because he has a lot of other 
um, issues with his body as well that wouldn't allow him to be able to do it on unseen services like this, which is why we end up having to do it. So we know just how hard, the other day we were going to drive downtown and count how many handicapped spots there are, because we're like, there's too few and we can never find parking nearby. So that was kind of our mission. And I didn't know that this commission existed until you guys had reached out to to the Human Rights Commission, I went home and told my mom, I was like, it doesn't have to be a two-person show. There's actually a whole commission dedicated to this. So it was definitely very exciting for us. I, th I think you should the reason, and the reason why is because we had it throughout the community on every ward. Right. And we talked mm -hmm. about people with disabilities. And I said, you know what? Now we need to join in. Yeah, no, this is definitely great. I'm very excited about it, for sure. And as I said, since we are doing those listening circles, I think we can definitely do one when we come in and you guys can delve deeper and dive deeper a bit into that and so that way we can all of us are kind of more well versed on it and we are definitely would be happy to show our support for sure. I mean I don't want to speak for the whole commission but I'm sure that they would they would agree. Yeah. And what Chris Columbus was talking about, you really should read what has been designed and sent to the mayor. And for an example, we have Phil Sullivan here today again several times with some serious problems going on. And when you're talking about your own brother with a wheelchair and so forth like that, which is right on King Street, and it's the it's Fabian gasoline station now, and he has called the police and so forth like that, nothing is being done. And the delivery trucks are coming and parking on the full sidewalk. Right. You know, yeah. so this has become a big problem. Yeah. So having you with us hearing this, we're going to need all the support we can and working together because some, yeah. somebody is going to get hurt there really bad. And I would like to help with that. I, I should be on that on your um, committee too because I'm, I'm a big advocate too, too. So I think I should be on your, I know you and your brother too. And I think more than welcome to come, they're all open to the public. Um, it's the last, I want to say last week, Wednesday, last Wednesday of each month. Um, and we meet at 5.30 over, I don't know the name of it, it's right behind um, City Hall, but I don't know what it's called, it's a council chamber, I believe it is. Yes. So you're more than welcome. If any of you ever want to come to one of our meetings as well, we take public comment at the beginning, so you're more than welcome to come in, offer any public comment, or ask for any type of support needed for the commission. But I think it might be even better in those kind of environments because of the rules around it. We can't have a full back and forth conversation. We can just take the public comment and that's it. So it might be more viable or better to have them come in and do a full conversation instead, kind of off the off the book. So I can definitely talk to them and see what that would look like and what that would entail for sure. Okay. You yeah. said last Wednesday? Um very last one the last Wednesday of each month um, at five thirty PM. At five thirty? Yes. At where? Right. Um the council chambers behind City Hall. Oh yeah that's good. And when you tell your bride town I'll see I'll see him soon. I will, I don't know. How come he doesn't? How come he doesn't go to court with 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 you? He's too busy having fun at home, children, while I work all day. That's why he gets to go to the gym, go he shopping. Him. Yeah, he does. I miss him too. Yeah, it's hard to be away. So, Chris, the list, the the public forums about the ADA transition plan. Um, will people be able to give their input at those that will affect? alterations to the plan or is it just yeah, the, that we the, are rolling the statutory it out? requirement under the ADA is that we give opportunity for uh, concerned parties to at least comment we would like it to be more active than that because a lot of explanation has to go has to go into the uh, the process of just having folks understand the, the scope and potential. I think the great advantage we have with the ADA is we've got some immediate leverages under the law. We have, in terms of architectural access, we, we, we've got a state level, yeah. um, but we also have this possibility of bringing um, ADA complaints, which is probably leverage that your committee yeah. doesn't enjoy in all areas. <laughs> yeah, that's something true. I think too when um, you brought up the when I first came in the parking spot in front of Roberto's and making a recommendation for that park for the parking spot to be in front of Roberto's, not the one that's across the street. Those things are also if you ever want to reach out to the Human Rights Commission as something that we can co-sign or co-sponsor or perhaps write an article in the Gazette showing that we stand with 
um, your commission and that that's something that we agree with. Those type of things as well, we can help with and we can do it and we've done it for other commissions and other groups as well. So definitely keep us in mind for anything like that in the future as well. Good. We can get you to co-sponsor with us to make sure that no delivery trucks park on any sidewalks here in the city of North Ayrton. Yeah, yeah, things like that for sure. If, if you know you have something coming out or type of recommendation that you're making so we can time it and have it be at the same time or um, a little bit before or if you guys release something and then we have something that comes out and we can go the next day supporting that or something, um, definitely let us know we can work on timing and I can talk to the whole commission but Karen and Lori tend to be the ones that it's yeah, become a serious problem. Yeah, no, for sure. I know it, it's very, yeah, it's very frustrating. I took my, this is kind of the side of one, it's not in Northampton, but I took my brother to a Celtics game this past Saturday, and there's so many able-bodied people getting on the elevators that we had to wait 10 to 15 minutes to get him on, and it was, so I know sometimes you can't see it, so sometimes somebody might look able-bodied, but they're not, but there was a lot of younger kids just running around and taking the elevator, and we had to wait 10, 15 minutes to get on, it was so frustrating to me to think, the same with the Holyoke Mall sometimes, when we're waiting in a wheelchair, if people are in line before us, they'll get on instead of letting the wheelchairs on first, so there's strollers and wheelchairs on first, so I know how it is, and can, little things like that add up on a daily basis when you're hitting not just this small thing, but this small thing, and that small thing, it turns into 20 small things that make the day a lot, yeah. a lot harder, yeah, you're definitely preaching to the choir here, so I'm happy to help and support in any way that we can, for sure. And I, and I also think that because we're hearing from people about uh, the problems with the sidewalk being shoveled and like with a woman counselor here for Sullivan having difficulties even doing and following the procedures of making the phone calls and so forth. I have to agree with what I'm hearing about educating. Education is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And I think every department in the city should be educated, okay, on people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. It's come to that point here. And you know, like you have a resident come in who has great concerns about the safety of somebody, and he's not the only one many people are coming for. And it's like, what do we do? What's the next step? And that's to educate. I really think educating and training is so valuable of learning the concept of the rules and what the laws are on the Commission on Disabilities. The rights, and a lot of the rights are not being taken care of. So I need to thank you so much for coming. Yes, of course, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And look forward to meeting with, and oh, look yes. forward to meeting with Us you. as well, yeah. I actually don't have any cards on me right now, but I can write my name for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what letter. court are you on? Sorry? What court are you on? On the Springfield Juvenile Courts. Okay. So I do all the Springfield District mm -hmm. um, I work with you for incarcerated. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's a tough course. So you work it is, day. but it's very rewarding. Yeah. I do 9 to 5, which is why I haven't been able to come to one of these meetings before. I thought I'd get out a little bit earlier today, but... I appreciate you being Oh, no, of course. I'm more than happy. This way, if I can talk with you. Yeah, for sure. I'll do a great job. Great. coming to this commission and nothing is happening. Well, this really is perfect timing because that's what we're looking to do as well, have more collaboration as a whole. Yeah, so this really is perfect timing for this to happen exactly. Thank you. 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 Thank and just to note, I forgot to mention, part of our listening circles through the year is at the very end we're going to um, come together with a report, kind of concerns that we've heard throughout the city, and that's going to be presented to the mayor and to the council. Um, council chambers as well, so that's something, it's not just all these listening circles just for us to hear what we can do, it's also going to be compiled into this year-long report with a lot of um, stats and info and things like that that we're going to end up passing along, so it won't just be, you know, lost in the cogs of the yeah. human rights commission, nothing get passed up. So anything you guys think of that you think would be useful, definitely let us know. Feel free to email me, call me, thank you. Me. But thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Yes. 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 Um, you know, we know I don't want to make you the issue. I'm going to try that proposal. 
Right. I, I feel good that I was actually able to get that stuff printed out and, and bring it in today. I, I feel like you know bringing things to conclusion. But what I also realized, I'm, I'm sort of at the um, at the point of having done about what I can do. The, the final steps on this, while well, the read through, there are probably a couple of paragraphs to straighten out, is going to be the, the, the proofreading um, and looking at the, the final layout and there's a lot of many final layout issues on it. But uh, it would be very good to have you all know, read, particularly those first 22 pages uh, closely, the others mostly supporting you know, appendices, um, and see if. You know, there's anything there. Boy, if it doesn't strike you as right, don't be shy to say it. Or if you think that there's, we're trying to frame these recommendations pretty broadly so that a lot of the, the specifics fit under them. But if there's something broad that's missing, by all means, raise it. As I said just in the last couple of months, um, you know, I have added, um, have added recommendations there that are, are reflective of these issues that, that have been raised. And they have particularly have had to do with uh, physical access. But um, in the midst of that, we don't want to, want to lose what I think in, in this city is so tremendously important is, is communication accessibility. Um, because if we were to accomplish two things, one, have good discussion um, get a good turnout from the deaf community and, and have a good, strong discussion on what people are experiencing and, and what they would like to see to facilitate, you know, fuller participation in public programs. That would be big. And the other thing, it's my personal one because I can't hear for, you know, yes. um, myself, but is the use of the system, listening system. And thanks for those of us who are, are part of it. That, that, the hearing and communications piece, um, I think, is, is really important. Uh, the key to the whole thing um, in the discussion, again, with the mayor is that this is, is roughly laying out what would be a broad scope of a work plan on the assumption that we are going to move forward on, on uh, seeking funding, on having funding for um, an ADA board meeting position that will be Standing. How it's going to be structured still has to be has to be resolved. Um, but the more allies that we generate, like the uh, folk from the Human Rights Commission and, and others, and have a, a broad public discussion of this, um, um, the more support, the more leverage we're, we're likely to have. But it would be a matter of someone who would be available to respond in situations when. Um, we're not getting the response from a, a city department that, that we need in some way persistently and be able to follow up and say, well, let's design a training. Mm -hmm. And trainings are likely to, for the most part, need to be customized to the individual department's responsibilities. That certainly would be true of the police department to, to improve enforcement. So, so that's it. I breathed a bit of a sigh of relief. Judy saw me flying around the house, printing out one, um, one, one part of this report and another. Um, I, I would ask Marie to give it the first read, and, and if you can extrapolate anything or point out anything that's particularly embarrassing in those first 22 pages, then we can distribute it to the, uh, to the commission as a whole. And with people's informal feedback, we can then remove draft. Um, it certainly needs to go, go back to Lynn in the mayor's office, and I will give her a note on what the substantial additions since our my conversation with the mayor. Um, and then let's move forward on, on scheduling a public hearing or hearings. Mm -hmm. Among the places that's been discussed has been the process yes. with Healthy Northampton, and you can probably describe. Age friendly Northampton? No, the, the small grant at the collaborative. So, yes, uh, the planning department of the city has contracted with Healthy Hampshire to do an assessment of the parks and recreation spaces um, in terms of their accessibility. Is that what you're talking about? 
Yeah. Yes, and there's a lot of overlap that's going on as well with H friendly Northampton too. So I think um, there's a lot of people who are going to be invested from all different directions, I think. But I, I think there's also other information that will feed into our, when we look at this, like we'll be able to look at all the reports that are being done. You know, the fair housing assessment that was done, the assessment that's being done on parks and recreation and open space. Um, each friendly is going to be looking at all these things. So we'll, we'll continue to inform, I think, improvements that will that will make everyone's lives better. I mean, because a stroller, a stroller needs to go down the sidewalk, a wheelchair needs to go down the sidewalk, we need to be able to walk places, and that affects whole gener all generations, basically, and all kinds of people. So um, if we can move towards <coughs> sort of universal de design in the city in general, then we won't run into as many issues. It's, it's yeah, it would be helpful strategically. I have not been through any processes here in Northampton. This is my first go in terms of you know, any kind of uh, right. um, well, everything any, needs any to recommendations be. with budget implications. So yeah. any recommendations strategically on which groups to meet with, you know, what kind okay. of a circuit right. we need to do to, to generate um, support. And the more connections we can make between the, the broad parameters of the disability and uh, the specific subset concerns. Yeah, I, th I think it would be good to think of all the target markets that we want to shop this around to because I, you know, a lot of seniors will end up having some form of disability. They may lose some eyesight, they may lose some hearing, they may lose mobility. Um, a lot of children in the schools, families, I mean, every age group we need to talk to, and so we might want to, we might want to go to different locations and, or, you know, call those people to the, to the table at, you know, certain times. And we have it in the schools, Rather too. than having a general, like, just, you know, town right. hall type thing to sign up. in the schools for children with hearing and people with disabilities. So right. When you're talking about recreation and so forth, we need to get out of that path and look at the schools. We have some college also that we have all bring the different in. ages. Exactly. Yeah, and we, we would need to do different times of day as well, I think, yeah. to reach different people. Because yeah, working is, people aren't going to come during the day. And, and it's one of the ways in which it would be very helpful for the members of the commission to really become familiar with it so that we could divide up that outreach process. Is that mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do have to sort of put together a plan about how we're going to roll it out, what days and times, and to who we're going to be asking to come to, to each specific yes. time and date. Yep. So. And as often as possible. How do you actually educate departments or wherever of what the laws are and the importance of them. That's a biggie to me, Chris, is that here we have a problem here and now I feel and I hear from people saying, well, they make calls, nothing happens. They make calls, nothing happens. So how do we correct that? Because it is serious where somebody really could get hurt badly who's disabled in a wheelchair or whatever. So how do we educate a police department or, you know, where I'm coming at, or whatever department, the Department of Public Works, whatever. How are they going to be trained to learn what the laws are that you just talked about, which is breaking a law with civil rights? So, so shopping this around is going to help educate people too. I what? Think. Say that again. The talking to the public and maybe also the city departments about the transition plan will educate people about the issues that we are not up to par okay. on. But later on, I think that has to be part of. Is yeah. it part of the transition plan that? I don't know. Well. 
Enforcement is one thing, but we can do a, a section on you know moving forward actually how to do it. But my experience has been in the past. First of all, the ADA under, under the requirements is any administrative unit with 50 or more employees that's in some way administratively distinct has a responsibility to have ADA coordination internally. Right. In other words, there's a specific and specialized set of police responsibilities that are not being met. In my experience, if you do a training, what we often see is people who aren't in the formal line where the one who's supposed to have the responsibility, but you have a natural champion because they've got some personal reference, um, personal experience, family member, friend, veteran, whatever it is, um, you look in the training process for those folks who light up in some way and then see if the organization can really call on them because you have to have people calling out each other internally, mm -hmm. right? And saying, you know, hey, you're falling down on the job. You really need to look at that that enforcement piece and take the time to write the ticket. That's what it is. So or get out of your cruiser and, and, and go is. over. Okay. And Thank until you. people in a yeah. department or subunit start picking that up, it, it never works just from the top down. Yeah. It can't do that. And that's again why we need an active coordinator uh, who's going to have substantial time to be able to do that kind of training. Right. And I don't want people to say to any one of us or anybody, I give up calling. Yeah, no, that's... that's bad. Especially when you're asking for help because something is serious. And he has made many, many calls, and I know people have made calls too. And they even coming to meetings, they don't even want to come to meetings. Well, we need a two minute warning. Yeah. We all have two minutes left. Yep. And I get my final about the ADA is you know, in multiple times we work with people, that's what we're doing. If you have a, a documented, you know, pattern of failure to comply, eventually you make the decision, are you gonna bring a complaint? All right. It takes energy, it takes time, but they, there's nothing like saying, I was going to sue your <laughs> delicate posterior. Uh, <laughs> well, I will, I, will, I will bring it up to the mayor, and we, and we will try to have a meeting. Yeah, and the thing is that the mayor is being very supportive at this point. Of and course. It's about getting the resources in place. So motion on the floor to be adjourned. We're adjourned. Second. Third. Those in favor? Aye. We're adjourned.